Monroe, North Haven, Wallingford, Durham, and East, uh, East Haven, is that correct? I'm here with Senator Paul Chicarella. We are in North Haven, North Haven NHTV, and thank you to the studio and all the people that work here and volunteer and to support local access TV. Tonight we're going to go over the legislative session of 2021. We wrapped up, but we actually have to go back to special session this week. Uh, the job, we're on, both honored to serve, but it's technically part-time, but it's really all year round. It's uh, seven days a week, 365, and we're both honored to serve. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Senator Ciccarella, and then we're going to discuss uh, Paul's, Senator Ciccarella's first session, what we've done, what we want to continue to do, and be involved in all of our communities. So thank you all, and thank you, Senator Ciccarella. Paul. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, so we are going to kind of recap our, um, my first session and this um, interesting session that it was <coughs> with all the challenges of COVID and, and the specifics of how it was not a normal session. And I am looking forward to getting back uh, in the building and seeing what it's really like um, with the public being able to enter their building and, and really to get a good understanding of how it works not in this Zoom world. So uh, excited to get back to a, a sense of normal, uh, both out of the Capitol, um, but mainly um, to see what it's going to be like when we don't have those challenges. Um, so we're going to touch on a few things yeah. if you want to start. I will, but I just, so what we did to the public, we did have a com uh, committee session or committee meetings all through Zoom via Zoom. And it worked fairly well, but the problem there is the public really is not engaged, and we're, the legislators aren't engaged as well as normally because you're, you want the public, you want to listen to the public, you want to hear what they have to say, and then act on that. I will say, Paul, you did a really good job. Uh, it's not, it wasn't easy to navigate, and you did well. And then when we started in the session days in April, May, and June, uh, you really found your way around well. And uh, we're going to talk, the first bill we're going to talk about is a sensitive subject. Um, it was a bipartisan bill, but really Senator Paul Chicrell led it. Uh, we all helped a little, and that's Tristan's law. And Paul, would you let the viewers know what it was? And uh, sure, sure, that'd be my pleasure. Um, we we spoke briefly on it on our last show. Correct. Um, and um, unfortunately, there was an incident that took place last year where a young child um, was just enjoying the ice cream truck, and um, on his way back from getting the ice cream, was struck by a, a passing vehicle. And um, I was um, familiar with other situations in my profession, and I realized um, that there was no laws in place to protect the children and the patrons of the ice cream truck. Also, the ice cream truck um, company, as well as the cars that are passing by. Um, it's hard to understand if they're um, vending ice cream, and, and um, sometimes people are just in a rush and not right. paying attention, and, and zoom right by. So unfortunately, um, after getting the ice cream, Tristan, was was struck and um, his mother reached out to numerous yeah. legislators both on the um, Senate and House side both sides as well and her av av advocacy for um, this issue and her child um, really got the ball rolling to put this legislation forward and I always say how important it is to hear from our constituents about their issues um, because truly we're there to be their voice and this was a great example of that. Um, so after speaking to Mrs. Carano, I started reaching out to senior um, legislators like uh, Dave and many others and, and Dave was a big help, helped me navigate the process. Um, I reached out on both sides of the aisle, explained the situation, and everybody was willing to help. And it was um, a really interesting process to see us propose the idea, um, have uh, public hearings, which I wish we did have the opportunity to have the people inside the house right. instead of doing it in a Zoom uh, way. Um, but it was very interesting to see it all come together, and we were able to sign Tristan's law um, in, into um, effect uh, the July of, of this year. And and um, you know, we're just hoping that you know no children or other pedestrians right. will be affected, um, and 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 that's what we're here to do um, is to put good legislation that's going to make it uh, safe and help the constituents. And that was a great example of that. And and Ron, amazingly, many many of those trucks have the arm that's going to put, be put in place if it's not currently in place. And if it wasn't put in place, it's not that expensive to put you know as far as putting it on the truck. So. You did really well. It was a really bipartisan bill, and that's the best legislation is p working together, getting things done, and, and I think you did a very good job with that. And, and uh, So then we, we, we did a lot of other things. We had a bipartisan budget. We'll get into that later, I think, because we're going to 
So we're trying to, uh, it's the first show we've done in a while, and we could talk about uh, Cedar Hills and North Haven or some other things. Um, sure, why don't you start with Cedar Hills? <laughs> that was something that a former legislator, um, Bill Gamardella, served in the House of Representatives of Connecticut back, I believe, Bill served the late 80s and into the early 90s, and um, we re remained friends, we're on the same age, and he had come to me, Len, Senator Fasano and myself passed something similar in 2015, there's called the Cedar Hills Infra District in North Haven, Connecticut. That's where PC Richards is, the old rail line. It's the, one of the oldest rail lines in the country, but there's about 90 acres of undeveloped property. What we did is, and Paul, you helped on this, we, we, we had a public hearing, we brought all the stakeholders in, and we're trying to create a, a tax district, infrastructure district for North Haven, Connecticut, which will help New Haven also, but mainly the districts in North Haven. It's 90 acres of land, and the goal um, is to bring a glass recycling company here and an anaerobic digestion company to North Haven. Um, and it did pass, the governor did sign it. It was a bipartisan bill. But that bill took a while to get going because with many lead pieces of legislation, the language has to be just right. And um, I have to thank really the, 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 the chair of the committee did a great job, Christine McCarthy Vey, she's a, Demo a Democrat. We worked together so well and she'd call me many nights and our attorneys, uh, pa uh, uh, Greg Hannon, um, they don't get the credit they really deserve, but our attorneys and our staff do a great, great job. So that bill did pass, and you supported it, and, uh, we'll, and I spoke to Mike Fried about it. He's excited. Um, and, you know, it's going to take some time now, but it's something that started with Bill and the companies, sort of Len and I, five, six years ago, and now this really creates the full district. Uh, there's going to be remediation, but that there's, the companies are going to pay for that, at least you know, maybe deep. Deep will get involved, but it's something important for our, our community. It's all about jobs. When I first ran, um, I can't believe it's 2010. Uh, one of the, the, it's always about jobs, education, jobs, and helping one another. And I think that's what I try to do still. And and uh, we did it together. Absolutely, it was a great, great project. Um, I know you guys have been working on this for a while. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it's good for the environment. Um, mm -hmm. There is a lot of, of environmental issues with right. glass, um, you know, amongst other environmental issues. Cycling, glass yeah. is really tough to um, and expensive to get rid of because it's right. so heavy. And there's not a lot of places that could properly break it down and reuse it. So right. if we were able to get one of those places, it's also good for the environment, but creating jobs. High paying jobs. And it's, it's, it's vacant land that's been sitting there for, for decades and decades. Back under, um, I think, Governor O'Neill, when Bill was there, they tried to do something, and then Kevin Kopech tried to do something. It just, it's, legislation takes a long time. Uh, you did really well your first year at Christian's Law. <laughs> you had a lot of, we, we, we all worked together on that, but that, that was really good. But it does take time, and when I first got elected, I don't know how you feel, Paul, I said, why is it so slow, you know, cumbersome in some, some senses? But I think it should be in a way, because you want to hear all sides. We might have one view, somebody else might have another view, but then you come, that's why the public hearings are so important. And, um, and it makes a better, I think, a better piece of legislation. There was some controversial legislation that the stakeholders on either side were not even in the building up until last week. So now, we're, tonight we're filming this show, July 12th. Um, up until July 6th, there was nobody in the Capitol. And we went back last week because we we're trying to change the juvenile age for all these car thefts and all the break-ins, um, and it was night. You know, it was it was a, an event that was very important. It, it was a bipartisan event uh, for the most part. Um, there were police chiefs and mayors and first selectmen were there, but it was nice to see the public walking in the Capitol. And I went up to some families and said, "It's just so wonderful to see you walking in the people's house, Connecticut's house." And I know you feel strong. You put legislation in for. Um, not that you want to hurt, you want these kids to learn a lesson, and they're, it's just, they're just, it's been going on for six, seven years, breaking in or stealing cars or breaking into garages. It's and I know you had some legislation and uh, none of it passed, but I think because everything that's happening in New Britain and Glastonbury, um, hopefully we're gonna get some traction. Absolutely, uh, it's a very serious issue. And um, you, you spoke on three really um, interesting things that I'd like to elaborate on. Um, mm -hmm. As we were saying, coming into this, being in a Zoom world, it was really hard to see everything get put together. And um, every single meeting felt the same because you're staring into a laptop um, and you have a little uh, bunch of boxes trying to make sense and, and really get an understanding of what each meeting was like. Um, I recall when I went up to the Capitol with Len, when Len um, was the senator, and 
the building had a buzz to it. It had a energy, uh, an amazing energy. And walking through the the halls when we were let back in, we had to make our votes inside the building, even though we didn't all have to be inside, you know, the chambers where we really, really should be. And we'll touch on that um, after. Um, but it's going to be great to get the people back in the building for oh, yeah. so many reasons because it is so important uh, that they get the opportunity the people get the opportunity to speak on these issues because you spoke about the problems that come in when people just make bills and we don't hear both sides and we don't hear what our people have to say right. that the unattended consequences of legislation sometimes could be so much more detrimental than the good it was intended to do and and that's why it does need to take time um, and to really no, make sure that there is um, no unintended consequences that will do more damage um, when it's really proposed to help. Um, you also spoke on uh, the bills yeah. that were proposed um, and again not putting forward so many bills because it really should take a lot of time to really understand right. what you're going to do, who it's going to affect, everybody it's going to affect. And I put only nine bills forward, Tristan's Law being one amongst a few others, and we could touch on those and maybe some of the ones that you put you forward. You helped me with another, we'll talk about it later, very important bill. When veterans, we'd yeah, like to definitely we'll touch on that. that. Yeah. Um, but I definitely put forward one of the bills about public safety and trying to address the situation with all of these minors that are breaking into these yeah. vehicles. And it started that way, and you know they're taking stuff out of the vehicle, then they started to take the vehicles. And unfortunately, there's no repercussions and, and I understand that children make mistakes and you don't want them to have to um, you know, deal with the consequences for their whole life. Um, but unfortunately, I think we're being a little too lenient because now it's getting more and more dangerous. Um, I'm speaking to police chiefs and, and constituents in district and out. That right. that's one of their biggest issues. And when I, even when I was knocking on doors campaigning, that was one of the biggest issues that were put forward. They don't feel safe in their own town. And they moved to the 34th District, Wallingford, North Haven, East Haven, because it was a safe right. town. And, and unfortunately, because of other legislation and unattended consequences, our poor police officers have their hands tied. And we really need to pay attention to that as well. People don't realize that an officer cannot... They could, cannot pursue unless there's imminent danger. And many times, and kids will get brought in and they'll say to the officer, you can only hold me six hours. And this is their 13th, 14th, 15th offense. And I go back to where you want to learn a lesson. Uh, I, I don't know how much time we have, but it's probably like a two minute story. Tell it. When I was 16, me and my friends, and God rest his soul, Mr. Corey, we used to, he had a fishing pond and he had to pay to fish here. Well, one night, we, we all said, oh, we're going to go fishing. Jumped over the fence, got arrested. North Haven, I had to go to the North Haven Police Department in the jail. And uh, we had to get fingerprinted. And I lost all my fishing equipment. I know it sounds like a crazy story, but lost all my fishing equipment along with my friends. Had to go to court and had to plead youthful offender for fishing illegally. N kids are stealing cars, breaking into houses, break, hurting assaulting. girls, assaulting people. And nothing is happening. So... I learned, I, it scared, it really scared me. And I lost all my fishing equipment. And uh, I know that sounds maybe trivial to some people, but you know, I, I, it taught me a lesson. And, um, and, and, that's, and that's the thing. And you want these kids to have mentoring or, 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 or do, have a better life. But we're gonna work on that. We're, hof we're hoping to go back um, in a couple of weeks. We do have to go back this week. We have to go back, Paul and I, uh, the whole General Assembly, July 14th, uh, special session. For the governor has wants to extend his executive powers for another six months. Um, I'm going to vote no. Nothing against the governor. I think he's done an overall good job with COVID, but I don't think we're in, in a, an emergency any longer. Uh, our numbers are really low. We, we're one of the best in the. We both are vaccinated. Our families are vaccinated. We're one of the best in the country, Connecticut. So I think it's we're le elected to legislate and create laws and and work for our, the public. And uh, the governor's the executive side, and I think it's time that. He works with the four legislative caucuses. Uh, with all respect, I th I'm going to vote now. Uh, I don't know Wednesday. I, I also uh, agree with you, and I voted no the last time. I did too. Yeah. And um, you know, on the floor, we spoke of the reasons for the no vote, 
And again, that was one of the things that I was going to touch on is when we are speaking in that, you know, for us, when there's 36 of us in there and we're speaking on that circle, it's not only just to talk to the camera and have right. our constituents hear us. Uh, it's a debate. We're there to change the minds or get people to agree with us or for somebody to change my mind. Exactly. And unfortunately, um, and, and, you know, again, I'm a pretty neutral kind of a guy and I said that campaigning. Um, you know, and I get along with everybody up there, and that's what made it, made it pretty easy for me to um, get Tristan's law pushed across, right. is to work together right. for the good of the constituents. And, and again, it's not a, an insult, but unfortunately, there was not many Democrats sitting around that circle. And, you know, I would have a conversation with somebody prior to a bill being he heard, be in agreement with this individual, and... The vote comes, I, they vote in the other way, and I see them in the hallway, and I say, you know, we talked about this. Can you, can you explain to me why, why you did that? And he's like, oh, I didn't know that that's what, you know, that's what that did. And I'm like, and, and, then, and then the comment, I'll take a look at it, but unfortunately, after the yeah. vote happens, <clears throat> there's nothing that could be done, and that happens all too often. And we're going to need to really pay attention to that and make sure, and I know we're talking in the 34th district here, but at a state level, that we're making sure that our representatives are representing us and paying attention to the legislation. You're right. Like in the House, we, we as we are in the chamber all the time. I, I'm constantly in the chamber. My role is to watch what's going on, to negotiate or work with our members or the other members. So, but our leader, Vin Candelar, made it a point that we had to be in the chamber. At one point, we were not only 50% were allowed, and little by little, we all went back in. We had to wear our masks, but we went back in. And, you know, many times, to your point, many people did not know the legislation or they didn't listen to the debate. And I've changed my mind on debates. I, I think it's a, a, a good thing if you could listen to something and say, you know, I, I think they're right. And uh, maybe I was wrong or vice versa. And I've got up to speak and try to, you know, convince people. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it does. But back in February, when we voted to extend the executive orders, I said in the floor that, you know, back March 2020, we all gave the governor his legislative powers. And again, I think overall his administration did a very good job. Um, he's got Josh Cabell from the science world, David Lehman from the business world. They've really helped him quite a bit, and, and he did listen to them. But it comes a point where we're out, of that, we're out of the crisis, thank God, and that we have done a good job, and that he should work with the four caucuses. If that's too much, work with the four legislative leaders, the respective leaders. Um, there's a reason we have the three branches of government what our founding fathers wanted. It's, it, it, it's no person should have that much authority and that much power. Um, in an emergency, for a short while, yes. But a year and a half later, uh, after we've come out of the pandemic and after we've done a good job, um, we should stay on this path and um, as many people as possible, you know, if they so choose to get vaccinated, and I hope they will, and just keep opening businesses and opening the capital and opening schools. I, I, I agree with you there, you know, and, and the viewers may not know the specifics of kind of how um, his orders or powers um, really affect us. Um, you know, I'll get a phone call to talk about an issue and not only am I not in the room to speak to the governor and let him know what our constituents are saying, but our leaders, as you said, are not in the room and being able to give input of what the constituents are saying. There's one person in a room making decisions. Right. And as you said, that's not how the system was designed. It shouldn't be that way. It should not be that way. And, and we really need to make sure um, um, that everybody's voices are heard and right. we let them know that we have to get back to a sense of normal and we have to utilize these equal branches of government yeah. so everybody has a voice at the table. It's good to see kids outside playing, kids playing sports, uh, adults you know, walking, and it's, it's nice to see, you know, us getting back to a, a way of life we, we all want to have and strive to have. So let's talk about, this was our, your first budget. Um, I've been there in the Capitol, for, uh, honorably serving, or thankfully serving the people in North Haven. Uh, it's my second budget I voted for, both bipartisan, 2017, which we've reaped so many benefits to this day, and I think we will for years to come with the volatility, bond, and spending cap. Uh, they, they're maybe boring, but they're very vital. We have nearly $4 billion in the rainy day fund now. That's from the volatility cap. It's, a, it's a excess revenue from income tax and the Wall Street. We've done really well in Connecticut. Uh, and then the spending cap and the bond cap. And in this budget, we kept on the bonding and uh, spending side, we kept below those. 
those caps. We did not raise taxes. There was a separate bill that was the tax for truckers, which I vo we both voted against. You voted, did you? we voted against that, which I thought was very unfair to our truckers. Um, but we did vote for the bill, the, the bipartisan budget, fully funds education at a great level, greater than normal. Um, the town side is funded. A um, lot of critical services, I think, were funded. Um, and I, 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 how did you feel about like supporting the budget and voting for the budget? So uh, being on appropriations and paying attention right. and listening to a lot of the um, conversations back and forth, uh, we talked about me only proposing very few bills, um, and one of which was to talk about ways to save money so we don't have to raise taxes, find where we're wasting money. Right. That's how we, you know, we do it in our businesses, we do it in our homes, and I think the state should do it as well. Find where we're wasting money and reallocate that money to the needed uh, areas um, and the services. Right. But um, that didn't make it very far. So um, getting back to the budget, um, as you said, th there wasn't a tax increase. We did get um, government um, or federal funding because of this COVID. Um, we did have a good year with the sales tax, and you could elaborate a little bit more on yeah. how we're collecting sales tax online and, and how that helped us. Um, but, you know, we did a lot of work, you know, to kind of take things out of there. Right. Um, so it would be hard not to support it. And it, 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 it was a decision that I had to think long and hard about to right. support this budget. Um, but we put a lot of work in to take away additional spending so we did not have to raise the taxes. A lot of people say, oh, you supported their budget. Um, you know, maybe it wouldn't have been the budget that if it was um, like it was, you know, four years back when there was um, a, tied a, in the a, a, a tied in the Senate where all of those good things were put into place. All of those caps and the way that yeah. we created that rainy day fund. Uh, Senator Len Fasano did a, did a heck of a job leading, uh, you know, the Senate and making sure uh, that those things were put into place. And if we did not have that, that money, you know, it would be a lot different. Um, and we did not have those spending caps and all of those different um, um, legislation that would protect our, right. our, our, our bank, if you will. Um, so, you know, I ultimately supported the budget. We did a lot of work on the budget. And um, all in all, I, I think it was a smart right. vote of, of a yes vote. So Paul serves on appropriations. That's the, the spending the money or al allocating money. I serve on finance and the bonding subcommittee. So on f the big, when the budget first came was presented to us, we were all a no vote, and many Democrats were a no vote. It was just a really bad budget. It was the governor's original budget, <clears throat> but then the Democrats' budget was even worse. But the good thing is that you work together, uh, both parties, a finance committee and the appropriations committee, um, and we ended up taking all the bad stuff out. I would have never passed the government. Governor Lamont's credit, he didn't want any massive tax increases. Uh, some of my friends in the other side, side of the aisle wanted a lot of tax increases. But there was enough people to come together and say, listen, we, we promised the teachers four years ago to increase their deduction for the Connecticut income tax up to 50%. We got that put back in. We listened to our teachers. For our seniors, our pensions are being phased out. Eventually, and starting, I think, in Taxes 20, on the pension. Ta Connecticut income tax. Thank you. It's Connecticut income taxes. And uh, eventually, our, the IRA, the income tax on IRAs in Connecticut will be slowly phased out. That's going to take a little longer. But those are the things that really help people. It helps seniors, helps people keep staying here. And, uh, but it was just something that was really good to work and, and to, to pass something that's meaningful, that moves our state forward. And to, when you mentioned the sales tax, so there's a Supreme Court case, I think three or four years ago, called the Wayfair, Wayfair Furniture Decision. And there was ruled that... Uh, if you buy online or sell online, you have to collect or remit sales tax to the states. States were losing tens of millions of dollars, and brick and mortar shops were losing money. And that really even the playing field. But what happened is states' coffers are, were just, you know, we're collecting all those sales tax dollars along with the stock market. I'll spend like 30 seconds on the volatility cap. That means after $3.15 billion of income tax each quarter, four quarters a year, comes as revenue to the state of Connecticut. After three point, we put money in the, anything excess goes into the rainy day fund and that's where we get about nearly $4 billion now. And 15% of that, when it ex exceeds that, money's put toward our pension obligations, long-term obligation. That's been a problem in Connecticut. I believe Kevin Limbaugh just paid down 61 billion for 20 last year and we're slated to pay, I think one point, I'm not sure if I'm 
I'm good at numbers. I don't remember the ex exact number. 1.2 or 1.3 billion next year. These are things created from the volatility cap when we work together. And um, so we, with that, we really would really helped us. But what Paul said is important. We've gotten so much federal money, nearly $10 billion in Connecticut, 2.9 billion in non-discretionary income. And that's what we've been spending on certain things, some programs. We have about 700 million left to spend. And that we both voted, I think it was bipartisan. It was only two no votes the last night of session that it'd be up to the legislature to spend that money, allocate that money. And that's where I don't understand why the governor wants more executive power because we took that authority away, which we should. It's, it's our role as, as, our, as Connecticut senators and representatives. Um, but we did pass that bipartisanly. It was, I think, in our, the chamber was two no votes. I think the Senate was unanimous. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. a lot to say, but you know what I mean. Absolutely. And, you know, we had a lot of people coming into the state from New York, and we had a lot of spending. Um, you know, you, you go anywhere, you'll see that things are sold out, whether it was people not going on vacations. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of sales tax, not only from that Wayfair Act, oh, yeah. um, but there was a lot of spending. A and I spoke on appropriations, and I said, you know, if, if, if it was my decision, I would say, let's take advantage of the Head Start. You know, let's utilize that money appropriately let's not say okay we have this extra money let's spend that and I guess maybe that's just the way I run my personal life and my business but you need to be responsible with the money because we may not get another bite at that yeah. apple and if we're spending it you know and it's not going to be there next year or next budget right there's going to be there's going to be issues there so we have to make sure we take advantage of those head starts we have like three minutes left we did also pass we both support care for kids and then there's also dental and um vision for, for i think newborn to i think 26 years old i think that's really important we, we paul and i had office hours last week and um some of the folks were there that work for the organizations came to thank us um so that was something we did a lot of good things it's hard in one 30 27 minute show to go over go over everything but we're gonna hold office hours the end of august we're gonna start them again in the past we did them at mcdonald's right now mcdonald's is closed in north in the center of town inside so we're going to do our first one the end of August, and we'll put it on our Facebook, or you go to our website, or, or the paper, at Moonrise Cafe in North Haven, Yep, near they're, Bellini's. They were gracious um, enough to and, offer us. And Paul, actually, you set that up. and. Yep, they were gracious enough to offer us uh, a place to meet with the constituents. And, and honestly, I'm sure you may feel the same way. This is truly my favorite part, is getting to speak to everybody. Um, and again, hear their issues, but, but really get to talk to our constituents. That was probably the best part of campaigning was getting to see everybody. And I'm truly excited to see everybody um, in, in district. Looking forward to it. To be a good legislator or good at anything, you have to listen to people. And then you listen, but you, you do your best to act on it. And if you can't do it, you say, I didn't, you know, I can't do it. But you want to uh, listen to one another. Um, that's what I think people are craving for, for us to do our job and be honest with one another. We're not perfect by any means, but we, we try to be out there all, all the time and listen and get things done. No matter what your party is, our job <clears throat> is to represent everybody. And I've always felt that, and I think I've done that. Uh, obviously, I'm never going to please everybody, but you do your best you can. And you, 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 you say when you think you made a mistake, you say when you, you did your best and you got it done. But it's always a team effort. And like I said, uh, I'm looking at so what people we work, work with across the room right now, and we have such a great group of people we work with in the Capitol. Absolutely. And, uh, it's what just I, an honor and pleasure. And I'm going to let you wrap it up. we got about 30 seconds. Uh, the oh I, call, I call him the rookie of the year. Oh, boy, 30 <laughs> seconds. I talk too much. Um, no, you but, don't. But, but absolutely, um, you know, with our staff, um, truly makes all of the difference. They help us get back to the constituents and make all the things that we do possible. So without our staff, it would be a real challenge. And before I let you close it up, <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, hopefully we'll be having some guests and maybe we That's can get what I was gonna say. Mike Frieda or, or, or Len, or Len <laughs> Fasano. would love to have Len back in. And, and Len's also in, in some capacity back at the Capitol. So we'd love yeah. to have him in to tell us a little bit about that. But go ahead and wrap it up. No, it's just a, it's a pleasure working together, and it's a pleasure serving the, a great town of North Haven and our community. And I know you feel the same way, and we've got to know each other well over the last year. And it's really a good working relationship, and Absolutely. along with Mike and Len in the past, it's really always a community effort. But thank you all. Paul and I will be around town, and uh, please, feel reach, please feel, feel to reach out to us anytime. And we're both honored to serve uh, our districts. Thank you.